Hey folks, Coyote Duran here with another episode of Have Paw Will Draw. In this episode, probably more your premiere episode than the other episodes since that was just kind of like an intro clip. In this episode, we're going to kind of start getting down to the meat of the matter of art, and I'm going to share my thoughts on having a knock-around sketchbook, just touch on one of my tools a little bit, but the most important thing about this particular episode is going to be the use of copying and tracing when you're learning how to draw. Now I know that might seem a little superstitious and perhaps taboo, but trust me on this one. You'll want to follow along and it will take away all of that taboo and weirdness about copying and it, hopefully it will maybe like expand the doorway into your willingness to create art or do drawings or whatever. So grab yourself something nice and cold to drink and stick around for this episode of Have Paul Will Draw. Now, first of all, I like to get what I call a knock-around sketchbook. This is a sketchbook that isn't necessarily used for finished product or finished sketches or whatever. Uh, it's something of like, you know, a house of ideas, not to necessarily take something away from Marvel Comics. You see, there's a lot of old stuff in here, old notes, sketches, layouts, um, just stuff. You know, it, it doesn't really old designs from like years ago um, stuff that I'm working on now and this is just I mean here on this picture here as you can see I'll go ahead and try to close in on it a little bit hang it right here so to speak going on my phone and I'll zoom in here I was testing some ink nibs and some markers uh, just to see line weights and stuff like that just to see how they would look so this isn't something that's like dedicated to you know, finished stuff. This is just a, a book where I post ideas and stuff like that. And it gives me an idea of where I want to go with potential designs and stuff like that. So this is something that I think is probably best for what I'm going to show you right now. And what I'm going to show you right now is just a, a glimpse of me being a kid. Um, when I was little, what inspired me to draw was comic books. And I wanted to be a comic book artist so bad, I would get comic books, I'd buy comic books, and I would copy off of them. But I didn't quite get everything down the way I should have gotten. Um, so, when I drew a torso, it really kind of looked something like an upside down... Uh, I don't quite know what maybe like a snowman if you will I don't know if any of you own dogs out there but there's a dog toy called a Kong and it looks something like like this okay let me raise the light a little bit in here nope that's not what I want to do there I go a little bit more light there's something like it's it's called a Kong and it's it's something it looks kind of like a snowman okay so it looks something like this okay three sections and it's hollow in the middle so you can either insert like a miniature dog biscuit or like you know and it goes straight through you know so gives you an idea of what it's like go straight through it's hollow in the center and you can either like fill this with like some sort of kong has its own kind of like creamy treat it's almost like a, like squeeze cheese or something like that and you spray it in the center or you put a teeny dog biscuit so I had this idea, I don't know why, I don't know where the disconnect was, but a torso to me would almost always look, and I'm going to scoot this over, would almost look like this. And I would try to draw, let's just say, the, here, here's the chest, We're gonna, this is like, let's just say this is the clavicle, okay? Which, to, if you don't know what a clavicle is, if you're very, very young, if you're a kid, that's the collarbone, and it's like right up here above the pectoral muscles, okay? So then I would draw these two pectoral muscles like so. If you're wondering, okay, also if you're wondering what kind of pencil this is, this is actually an Alvin drafting lead holder. It's not like a conventional pencil. It's something that like uh, architects or drafters use, like manual draftsmen. And if you see here, you got, this is spring loaded, okay? And your leads load on this end. And so you push this end here and you pull this out and it gives you, like you've got this cloth, see that? You push this in like so. 
and then it holds it there like that. You can kind of see that it's not going to let it go. But you don't want it sitting out that far. I've seen uh, artists have it out that far. I've seen artists with this far. I'm kind of like in the middle. I'm about right there. I think that gives me a more comfortable... In, a, in another video, in a subsequent video, I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you why I, was, I'm, I use this. But I don't use other pencils. 99% of the time, I use this. Maybe 90, just to be conservative, but just to give you an idea. But look, we'll get back to this. So my torsos, this is the chest area. My torsos would wind up looking something like this. And I don't know why. I don't know where the disconnect was. But it was almost like I was drawing them in reverse to where the, where the pectoral muscles, see here? would wind up smaller than the area below, like the the abdomen, okay? And I thought I was I thought I was hot soup doing this. I thought I was so great doing this. But there was something about it that I, I just wasn't getting and I was I thought I was great, you know. So it looked weird to me and like I said it reminds me of the dog toy, the Kong. We'll go ahead and put Kong. Skull Island. Whatever. Anyway so, going back to my really malformed, looked malnutrition, like it had a distended belly, but I thought I was doing great. Until one day, I looked at a couple of friends, uh, their artwork, and there were these two kids who were like one year older than me, and they were Jerry Turner, Jarrett Turner, and, um, and Michael Payne. They were both older boys, and they were cool, man. They didn't have like some, they shouldn't have like some kid like me you know, following them around or anything like that. But they were real cool with me, and they were real nice to me, and they liked comics too, and they drew. So, I would see them draw these really cool things. And I'll give you an example of what I saw them draw. They had comic books, and they had, you know, you could see they had these, all these advertisements. And I remember the advertisements, and, and a lot of you who are in my age group will remember the advertisements. There was one that was like a Charles Atlas kind of thing. And I remember one thing that stuck out in my head. I borrowed one of their comic books. I took good care of it. I borrowed one of their comic books, and the thing that I saw was this one singular arm. And I remember the hand came out like so. It was a right arm. If you were looking at it, it was a right arm, okay? And this right here, and, and I swear to God, this is exactly how I remember things. I have memories back to, like, age, you know, three. But I remember vividly a lot of the stuff I did when I was little. But I remember this, specifically, because it was the first thing that I really knew how to draw correctly. And it came out of this darn muscle man advertising like a Charles Atlas thing if you, I mean, you're very young you don't know what Charles Atlas is but mom and dad probably do and it was this one advertisement and it would always show these young people getting beat up on the beach and stuff like that and this bully would go on you know he'd kick sand in their faces and steal their girlfriend and stuff like that and these young guys would go I don't I can't take it anymore and then they'd order this how to build a better body by Charles Atlas program or whatever it was and then they would work out and they would build these huge muscles and then nobody would kick sand in their faces ever again and I remember specifically drawing and this is without framework this is just kind of like off the cuff drawing this arm and it was this arm specifically now I'm just doing this pretty quickly and this isn't with any this isn't beholden to any true anatomical structure or anything like that. But that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So, you know, I looked at that and I had this on a paper and I borrowed their comic book and that was where I got it from. And I remember them, them saying, I remember Jerry saying, that's pretty good. Where did you learn how to draw that? And I would show them specifically on the, on the page where I drew that. And it was a flexed arm. A flexed right arm and I thought it was the coolest thing man like I said I thought I was the the coolest thing next to sliced bread I thought at that age I was gonna be the next Jack Kirby or I was gonna be the next John Romita or one of the Buscemas you know all because I drew an arm correctly that was flexing a muscle and I thought it was the silliest thing ever you know 
but you know, it, it still rocked. It still was cool, you know? So you got a little bit of that little underarm area here, which kind of leads into what would go into like the pectoral muscles and stuff like that. So I could have continued going on with that. But that gives you an idea right here. And this is just real loosely. You know, this isn't like, you know, if I were to like ink this, I'd obviously, you know, redo things around here. This is just a guideline. And I don't do a lot of these gestural, you know, things on, you know, even, even with what I do. And I honestly should do that. I should do more gestural stuff. I should do more you know, formational swoops and, you know, ovals and stuff like that. To, let's just, I'll just, let's just put this right here. Like, let's just say, I don't do a lot of these, and I should. I should do more of this type of stuff, you know, where we've got more gestural ovals for heads with, you know, guidelines in the center to where we'd actually, you know, put guidelines for the eyes and the nose, etc. I don't do a whole lot of that. Sometimes I do to an extent... I'll put center lines and I'll put positional areas where you would see, you know, where you would see the, um, you know, the eye areas here. And there's other science to that too. Like I said, I'll talk to you about my tools in another video. And I'll talk to you about technique in regard to finding physical positions, uh, anatomy with, you know, cranial and facial features and stuff like that. That isn't important right now. But what's important right now is the lesson that I'm trying to impart. And that is, it is okay to copy, and it is okay to trace when you're in pursuit of trying to find a way to render things, and a way to do things correctly. Now you see what I did here? I gave this comparison of that dog toy, the Kong, okay? And I'm likening it to how I actually had started drawing, like, torso anatomy. Here's the chest. Here's the abdomen area. But for whatever reason, I kept going back to this whole, you know, here's the belt. And I thought I was great. I thought I was doing excellent. But actually, this kind of looks like an old hippie. This looks like, you know, sunglasses. And there's a nose area. There's a mouth and a beard, long hair, whatever. That's just me kind of going off on a tangent. But it wasn't until I started really copying in a dedicated manner that I started getting things kind of right. Now this isn't right, okay, by any means, but it gives you an idea, a little better idea. So I remember looking at this and going, I can really draw if I just take my time and I just pay attention. And it's not like I'm trying to tell somebody else that, oh, look, I just came out with this off the top of my head. I can actually tell somebody, I did copy this, but I didn't trace it. I didn't I didn't take, like, you know, the comic book and put it underneath the paper and then trace on top of it. I did it from hand, from eye to hand, to pencil, to paper. And it's important that you kind of get an idea of how to do that. Because if you become an established artist, you might do portraits of pictures that are already established. So you're going to have to develop that eye to hand, to pencil, to paper technique. Now, when I knew I started, I, I kind of was on the right track, was when I had an Invaders comic book. And the Invaders, anybody who knows who the Invaders are, it's a World War team, World War II team consisting of uh, the original Human Torch, Prince Namor the Submariner, um, Toro, Captain America, the Wizard, and I think Jackal and Spitfire. I could be wrong. But anywho, I had was looking in this, this, this comic book and I remember seeing a picture of Captain America and I remember seeing where I went wrong with the torso. I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse here of how I'm mapping this out. This right here is going to represent that area where the uh, clavicle is, where the collarbone is. And this is just going to be quick here. I'm going to be more detailed and a little bit more trustworthy. You'll be able to trust trust me in subsequent videos. And, you know, this just gives you an idea where things map out a bit, okay? So here we are again. See this here? Right here? That spot right here, the chest of the guy with the bloated area where I thought I was doing so well. Okay, here's the here's the abdomen. I thought I was doing great. I had a little crisscrossy thing. Not, not at all. That is not Captain America. I started drawing Cap because I was copying off of another panel 
and I took my time copying off the panel. So, I started realizing that, okay, I had a good chest here. I had a good starting point. And mind you, back then I was drawing a lot slower than this because I wasn't trying to make a point. Whoop. Just bumped that with my nose. Sorry about that. I was trying to make a point. But the point that I or the point I'm making now is I was kind of going in reverse back then. And right here, I'm going in the opposite direction now. Whereas this area is much bigger and wider than the chest. Which you see here. This area up top, the pectoral muscles, should be a lot wider and a little more fuller than this area that you see down here. This is all because I paid a little more attention to what was going on because of this. Because of what I was copying and sketching here with that Charles Atlas, you know, build your muscles, don't be a little weenie on the beach and get sand kicked in your face advertisement. So it encouraged me to pay a little more attention when I was working on torsos like this. So then once I had everything mapped out correctly or close to correctly here, you know, you can't really judge that or you can't really, you know, sit there and say when you're seven or eight years old that you're, which is when I really started drawing when I was about seven, you can't sit there and say, oh, this is great. I don't need any more help. No, of course not. That's silly. You're going to learn tons every day. I learn tons every day. If I don't draw and I come back to the book or I come back to the board or I come back to my table, if you will, um, I'm going to exercise something new that I've learned over the past few days because if I'm not drawing, I'm still learning. I'm still looking at some of my influences work. And the work of influences on your work, that's another lesson I'm going to come back to in another video about how it's important, but you should not let it shape your outlook. Okay, so, gives you a little idea here. This is not to be worshipped or set in stone. This is right here, and, and typically, typically, I do start with the head, but I wanted to kind of prove a point here with this as opposed to this. So, I'll just go ahead and throw in a quick head shot here. And mind you, again, this is mapping it out. Like so. A lot of rules to anatomy. A lot of rules to quick mapping things out. You got a head there. See that? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and graph in a quick mask area here, so to speak. This is what I guess would be considered Cap's cowl. I don't know if it's really a cowl. It's more of a mask. I think when people think of cowls, they think of Batman. Okay, now here is what... Just a little, quick little motion here of where we would have the wings. The A. This is classic Cap. This is what you would consider to be Cap for, like, you know, the Avengers movies or anything like that. It just kind of gives you an idea where things are going to be placed. Now, when you're seven, okay, you're looking at this going, ah, oh, this is fantastic. I am ruling the world on this one. Well, no, you're not really ruling the world. You're draw just drawing better than you might have been drawing before, but at least you're drawing, okay? Let me go ahead and bang out a quick star here, like so. That's the star. That's that midriff area above the belt where you're going to have all the stripes. Mind you, this is seven-year-old coyote rocking this out, okay? But you get a better idea of what is going on here as opposed to what's going on here. You got Captain America here. You've got Congton America here, okay? And then you got Charles Atlas here. Okay, now, my point is, give copying a try. When you're younger and you're trying to kind of get a sense of where you're going with art, copying and tracing rules because you're getting an idea of where things should be. And it's even better if you're doing copying and tracing off your favorite artist. Now, do not, I am by no means saying that if you take a comic book and you place it between paper, this is a little thick right now. Uh, it was easier doing it like on notebook paper and stuff. 
But if you do that sort of thing with notebook paper and you're tracing through the notebook paper, don't go telling people that, oh, this is my design, because that's wrong. That's really wrong to do. Tell people you traced it. Tell people that you're trying to learn and you're trying to get better because that's really the point of tracing and copying is to get better. Taking maybe something that one of your favorite artists has done and establishing a, a, a way to, you know, a way to work on heroes you like or maybe a style you like. Um, but don't ever tell people that that's your original work. Because that's going to bite you in the butt in the end. You're, you should never take credit for other people's work, period. Um, tracing, like I said, it's a good way of getting you to understand form and proportion. And I don't suggest tracing an entire picture. I suggest maybe tracing a form and then taking an ink pen. And then, you know, deciding that, you know, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'll, you know, I have the basic form. But I will go ahead and... Uh, and do the rest of the detail off of my own mind, or maybe I'll just go ahead and do the rest of the detail by just copying from looking at one picture to the next. I traced out the basic form, I'll just do the rest freehanded. You do that, and you're gonna get a better sense of how to draw later. See what I'm doing here? This is more of that, that form type thing here. Um, like I said, I don't do a whole lot of this. I just kinda go straight from nothing to detail. Um, you got little eye holes here, little areas to put Cap's eyes. Like I said, this would be more classic Captain America. You got a little line here for where the nose would end. You got, bang, tip of the nose. There's a little nostril action. That type of thing. You got, you know, a little bit of a straight mouth here, bottom lip. You gotta give Cap a thick neck, you know? He's a strong guy. You gotta give him a thick neck. But this right here, okay, by no means this is not anything finished. Um, I'll show you a little something in one of my upcoming videos, a time-lapse video. It's going to be a two-parter, actually. I hope you really like it. Uh, but my point is, like I said, give it a try. If you're new at it, and this isn't just for the kids, and like I've said before, I said that I think in my introductory video, I'd like to see you know children checking out these videos to encourage them to draw. Um, this is for adults, too. Give it a shot. Give it a try. I've seen so many adults and I've heard so many adults say, I can't draw a stick figure. Well, that's not true. Everybody can draw a stick figure. And if you want to try drawing or painting, just draw. Just paint. Just give it a shot, you know? Give it a try. Um, try some of these little simple methods. Trace. Just do something. You know, as long as you're getting pencil to paper, um, you're going to do great. Um, but you just have to actually start doing it, and you'll be in like Flynn. So, just give it a shot. Break out a pencil. You don't even have to have fancy materials. Like I said, when I was a pup, I had lined notebook paper and a number, number two pencil. So I thought I was so professional when I finally first got my first sketchbook. So, you know, get any, you know, you, these materials are inexpensive. Even a good lead holder is inexpensive, but you can't just sharpen these with anything. Uh, like I said, I'll get to that later. Find yourself a nice mechanical pencil, nice number two pencil, whatever, and just get started and have fun and do things like this. And don't be afraid, like I said, to copy. Don't be afraid to trace. Just don't put all of your work into it. Just give yourself an idea of where you should be. So um, I appreciate you tuning in this week for Have Paul Will Draw. Um, like I said, my name is Coyote Duran. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. Get yourself some paper, get a pencil, and if you have a paw, you can definitely draw. See you next time.